Okay, here we go. Uh, this is episode tool, two, toolbars and home pages. Now, uh, first of all, thank you to the well wishes and uh, encouragement from the people that emailed me back. But uh, I just wanted to quickly reiterate the purpose of what I'm doing here. I'm basically going to be covering the things that you need just bare bones to start with D2L uh, because I figure you can learn all of the other toys and different things. So one of the things that you're going to see as I go through here is, is I'm going to be asking you to take a bunch of stuff that is all very useful stuff, a lot of which I do use, and just put it to the side because you don't have that kind of time this week and you can always pick up those toys and learn them later. Right now I'm just going to be uh, going over uh I'm just going over the bare bones to get the thing functional and simple so that when the kids look at it, it gives them all the things that they need in order to get the information from the site on a daily basis. All the other stuff we can learn. So when we left off, we were here on the home page. Now I'm going to take you into an actual course thing. Like I said, these are all already generated uh, courses that uh, have been created by SIS. As a quick point, uh, if you happen to be one of the people that has a split class, that can be an issue here because you're going to have like two or maybe even three different courses that you're all going to be wanting to post the same content to and that can't communicate with each other. If you are in that situation, you are, it, it, does, it takes a couple emails, but all you got to do is just contact uh, the uh, the board and they can merge your classes into one course code for the purpose of your class site and then your kids will all be able to communicate with each other they'll all technically be the same class and then you don't have to update three different class sites every time you do something so I'm clicking into one of my course sites that I've deliberately set back to a default appearance. Yours may not be identical to this, but today I'm gonna to quickly go over how, uh, how the site works so that you can quickly get it to look the way you want it to. Uh, I'm gonna start by just quickly talking about the, uh, uh, the, the top of the, the screen here, just to remind you guys, this, is the, this lists whatever page you're on. If you recall, this is what lets you go between pages right here. Uh, this is your email thing, which will get you back into email. I'll talk about email in a separate uh, episode later on. Uh, this is subscription alerts. I've literally never used it, so ignore it. Uh, this is update alerts. Although it's useful for the students, you can also ignore it, even if it gives you a little uh, marker like this, because all it does is tell you when you yourself have updated your, uh, your course. So it's not doing anything meaningful. Uh, the settings thing, or the admin tools thing here, whoops, is uh, only useful in that you can use it to import uh, import things in. You guys aren't, I'm not going to be going over that with you guys, but if you happen to uh, go through the Ontario Resource Bank and have uh, a prefab course or something like that you want to bring in, that's what you use that for. And then finally, the uh, you have your face here. I'm not going to go over any, uh, like your anything meaningful here, except to say that the really important thing uh, that is uh, going on here is that you have your uh, ability to switch over to view as a student at the top here. This is what lets you look at your course as students would see it, which is potentially useful because you uh, can occasionally get into a situation where you know a student says, I can't see something. And, uh, and you're like, what's going on? And usually it's because you haven't uh, you've set it as inactive or uh, that you've hidden it. And I'll talk about that when I go over assignments, but that's a very useful feature is just being able to see your site as the students see it to know if something is going wrong or that some message is not getting through. Okay, now I'm going to quickly go over the toolbar, which is this uh, uh, or nav bar, I believe it's called formally uh, at the top here. Uh, the course home is usually just to get you back to your main page from wherever it is that you've gone in, uh, in your thing. Uh, content, I'm going to tell you guys to remove that in a minute because uh, although it is a very useful feature, it is not going to be one of the ones that I'm, uh, I'm going to be telling you to use. You can explore that on your own time. Uh, assessment tools, I'm going to encourage you to keep and that's uh, primarily going to be because it contains rubrics, which we'll use later. And, uh, and class progress, which is also very useful, and I'll talk about that later. 
communication is the lifeblood because this is where your uh, discussion forums and your uh, your class list are, as well as announcements and these and email. And these are all useful things that you want the kids to have immediate access to. I'm not going to go over ePortfolio because it's extraneous and unimportant to just by the standards of what we're doing right now. And then I'm gonna encourage you to keep course admin here just because it's useful to always have it there uh, because, uh, and uh, I'll go over the, its uses later on in this video. Uh, but the key thing here is, is that this can be edited. It, you see this little uh, three dot button at the side here that pops up only when you go onto it. If you click on that, you can see that it says customize this nav bar and you can just click on that and it'll tell you that you have to make a copy because I'm using one that's a, uh, one of the standard working nav bars that's going on there. So even if your nav bar didn't look like the one that I just showed you, uh, you, can, uh, you can go in and you can play with it. So I'm gonna just quickly uh, name this uh, 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 nav bar. And, uh, and you can see that I have all of the different uh, components of the nav bar uh, here. And I'm just going to eliminate content and I'm going to eliminate ePortfolio because I don't think either of those are going to be useful for, by our standards. Uh, you I could also, if you feel like it, and I'm just going to show you what it looks like if you do, you can enable an icon-based nav bar, which will, will look like that. But I find that uh, unnecessary because it clutters up the page and it makes it so that they have to scroll down to see the useful stuff. So I'm not going to be, uh, be leaving that up, but I am going to save that. And there, now we have a, a streamed down nav bar that has only the things that I want the students to see. So uh, I figure that that's probably as much as you're going to need in order to get started. Now I'm going to talk about the band. All right, now I'm going to talk about this space at the top of the screen. This is called the banner and uh, it's very simple. Uh, you just, uh, it's just like the image that's going to be at the top of your page whenever people come back. And, I'll, and although it took me a little while to figure it out, it's pretty easy to edit. You just need to go up at the top and click and then you get this little uh, three dot menu here. And now you can change the image. I encourage people to change the image uh, to their thing. There's a lot of different sort of standard ones and it's just good to have your page look different than other class pages that the students are likely going to be working with. So uh, like I, I encourage you to change the, uh, the image at the back. But the really interesting uh, part of the banner is customized banner text here. Probably right now for you, it, says, it just says your course code at the top because I believe that's what it defaults to. Uh, but you can actually change this. And uh, you'll notice that uh, uh, at the top here. This is just a neat little trick I learned at a PD at one point, but there are actually what they call replacement strings. Uh, you can click on that if you want to see what some of them are, but the really neat one that I uh, came across is the fact that you can use uh, the little tilde first name, uh, uh, like squiggly brackets, I forget what they're called. Uh, and you can use those so that when the students enter into your class, they actually see their name uh, like, and I have here, welcome back uh, uh, student uh, uh, at the top of, uh, of my uh, banner. And you can edit this. I usually try and do it at least on a weekly basis so that they, uh, so that it's a quick little like headline that just keeps them aware of what we're up to. Like we've moved on to unit one or something uh, to that effect. And it says Mr. for me, just because I'm logged in as myself and the system doesn't have first names for teachers, but it should theoretically say there, stay a student name there uh, when a student comes in to take a look at it. Uh, so that in a nutshell is basically what you need to know about band. All right, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about the home page, but uh, I'm, uh, and I'm going to show you how, how to use course admin in order to edit and modify your home page. But uh, the key here is that like you, whatever it looks like now, I set this back to the default uh, for daylight. I don't know if it looks the same for you as it does for me, but it doesn't really matter because what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to create your own custom one that is completely scaled down uh, because this is kind of cluttery and students don't necessarily know where to look. 
but for the purpose of just starting on day one, April 6th, you're going to want to uh, to be able to I, to show the students exactly where to look. So for that reason, I am going to encourage you to go to Course Admin, uh, which is uh, and go to Home Pages, uh, which is one of the first uh, first things there. And uh, and I'm going to encourage you to use this button here, which is the Create Home Page button. There are plenty of default home pages, but I find that for, the, for our purposes here, they're all going to include a bunch of widgets that you don't need. Widgets are different uh, pieces that are all parts of home pages. So I'm going to encourage you to just click Create Home Page uh, uh, and just uh, give it a name. Uh, You can put a, de a description in. Uh, I'm just going to encourage you to just put a, a, a date in there or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, just so that you know uh, know which home page this is. Uh, and uh, you're going to want to stick with widget based and you're going to want a very basic layout. Uh, the, the layout ha and what I'm going to be encouraging you to do is just for the purpose of today anyway, add just two widgets. Specifically, uh, if you click on uh, add widgets and you just add announcements, which you're going to be running your uh, course primarily out of, and uh, add Google Apps. Uh, this is just because I know that a lot of you are probably used to using Google-based stuff with your students, and that will give them immediate access to uh, some of their Google uh, Google-based materials and their email and stuff like that. And that's potentially uh, very useful to them. Although I won't be over going over it in great depth, and uh, you can just take that and save it. Once you've done that, you it should uh, be in. Uh, in the list of all the various, uh, uh, all the various uh, home pages that you have at option. But here's the key: now you have to look at your active home page, which is just under the create home page button, and you're going to have to choose it. Uh, and once you hit apply, then it will be on your actual course. So now we're going to switch, use the course home button at the top of the screen. And we're going to switch back over here. And now there's just two things on your page. Now, the key here, I'm going to go over the announcements uh, feature in another video. But the key, the key here is, is that this makes it so that there's no additional clutter, nothing that's uh, distracting the students. And you can run your course almost entirely out of announcements. Uh, the first time I ran through this, I thought, oh, I'll use the activity feed. That sounds great. But don't. It's a trap. Because the difference between the activity feed and the announcement feed is announcements gives you a lot more functionality and activity feed doesn't import over when you do your when, when you uh, import all of the stuff that you've put on this course into the thing. So if you're ever going to teach an online course again and you want to move the stuff over, the activity feed will not go with it, but the announcements will. So if you're posting your lessons in announcements, then you'll be able to keep them. So I encourage you to use announcements over the activity feed. So D2 well has way more to offer you than what I am setting you up for right now. But again, this the purpose of this uh, series is to get you up and running quickly. And then you can learn about all of the other cool widgets that we either removed or uh, or exist within the program later, uh, because you can run your course almost entirely off of the announcements, which episode three, which I'm going to put out tomorrow, is going to be about announcements and widgets. Episode four, which will come out on uh, I guess Thursday, is uh, going to be about discussion forums and email. And then I'll finish off the, uh, the season one, if you will, uh, with assignments on Friday. And that'll give you the bare bones things that you need to know in order to be able to start on day one with uh, on Monday with this and uh, we'll see where things go from there but that's the plan for now uh, you can learn about all the other toys later but those are the things that you'll want to know going into next week uh, so uh, thank you again to the people that uh, that have wished me well on this and i will be back tomorrow uh, and i'm just going to say don't forget to like and subscribe just because i've always wanted to so uh, see you tomorrow <laughs>